So the next time you see an area like this one that looks a little down and out, just remember that it's not over until it's over. It's hard to imagine that the tornado swept through here over three months ago. Trouble continues in Clarksville where police fighting to keep crime off the street are now fighting to keep crime out of their own department. This is one of the first neighborhoods scheduled to be sprayed tonight. Now that's assuming this weather holds that we don't get any rain and the winds stay under 10 miles per hour. We spoke with several members of the Hispanic community today who feared that the Velazquez murders were indeed a hate crime. They're just running like a stampede up out of here. Chaos at Opry Mills Mall when gang violence broke out. Crying, people passing out, people scared, they nervous, they hear gunshots. The shooting took place between rival gangs a little after 9 o'clock p.m. They were exchanging gang-related signs outside of the stores Forever 21 and Aeropostale. Melanie Denny and her children were enjoying an evening of shopping inside Forever 21 when they heard the shot. Somebody pushed me out of the way. There was blood right there where I had been standing. Blood was the result of a single bullet that passed through the first victim to strike a second. Both victims were from the same gang. 23-year-old Jason Hoskin was shot in the back and transported to Vanderbilt Medical Center. He is expected to be okay. 15-year-old Lewis Perkins was hit in the arm and then went running throughout the mall where he was finally intercepted by police in the movie theater. Meanwhile, the mall was still open and shoppers were sent scurrying for safety. Susan Putnam was in Forever 21 with her five children when people began running. I'm grabbing them and running to the back of the room and thinking, are the guys who have the gun in here? Like, what's my plan then? This shooting comes right as Nashville police have been trying to crack down on increasing gang violence. We talked with Opry Mills general manager Henry Ford, who stressed that this mall is normally a safe place to be and does not have a history of gang problems. So far, police do not have any suspects in custody, but they do have plenty of witnesses and a tape of the whole incident. It's a sad statement that you cannot have your children come to a movie in a mall. Abby Martin, Channel 4 News. The people of Tennessee have spoken, and I like what they have to say. Former Chattanooga Mayor Bob Corker came out on top of the Republican nomination against opponents Ed Bryant and Van Hillary in one of the most watched and contentious Senate primaries. I am honored and humbled by the thousands of Tennesseans who went to the polls all across the state to cast their vote for conservative principles with positive results. But after heated political campaigning and television ads... The press called Bob Corker's attack on Ed Bryant a lie. The Tennessean said Corker's misleading ad is a character issue. Ed Bryant and Ben Hillary are making personal attacks. The nonpartisan factcheck.org called Bryant's attack ad false. The Tennessean called their previous attack ridiculous. Now Republicans face the task of uniting forces for the fall election. We share a common purpose, and I don't think it'll be difficult at all. Uh, we, we're now battle-hardened. We, we, we've had a rough, rough uh, primary, and we come out of this uh, united. On the Democratic side, it was really no surprise of victory for Harold Ford Jr. against a nominal challenge from four other candidates. Last night, Ford brought in former President Bill Clinton to rally support for the upcoming election. Harold Ford will do that. He will have a positive impact. He's young enough to be concerned about his own future, the children he hopes to have, the future that people his, of his generation has. He's smart enough and experienced enough. And Ford is more than ready to face Bob Corker in the fall. And we are so fortunate this evening to be braced and ready and prepared for what promises to be a campaign in the fall that I hope will be spirited and rigorous and focused on issues and substance and what we in Washington can do to make life better for everyone. And if Ford wins in the fall, he will be the first Democratic senator in 16 years to be elected from the state of Tennessee and the first black senator from the South since the Reconstruction. It's going to be an intense race to the Senate. Reporting from the newsroom, Abby Martin, Channel 4 News. Bredesen has always said, we want options to help save 10 care. Here's another one. The option presented today by activist Randy Alexander and others is called the money follows the person. This idea has state Medicaid money going towards individual in-home care versus care in an institution or nursing home. 
Protesters say that if this program were implemented, aside from personalized treatment and improved quality of life, it could also possibly shave a third of the cost from nursing home budgets, giving money to the ailing 10-care program. That study has been kind of floating around. It's not a definite number, but that's approximately um, about a third of the nursing home budget is, is usually what uh, state can save. Alexander is here all the way from Memphis, where he and many of his supporters came from almost a month ago to join 10-care advocates here in Nashville. While they've been persistent in their claims and in giving Governor Brennison options for saving 10-care, the governor's spokesperson says he's heard them all before. These are the same people who fought that plan. This is where we were. This is where we're forced to be. It's not where we want to be. But they didn't like that plan. That's what we first proposed. We're not hearing anything new from them today. Well, aside from just talking about saving 10 care, the group actually brought with them today a list of resolutions for the governor to answer within a 24-hour time period. Now, while there's no guarantee as to whether the governor will or will not respond, the group is at a point of doing whatever it takes to save the 10 care program. The governor was out of town today, but protesters were eager to give him their list of demands anyway. With state troopers guarding the office entrance, 10 care advocates chanted in unison outside the door to remind the governor that they will no longer be ignored and that they don't plan on going away. 32 days later, 32 days later, days later you still haven't met our demands. You still haven't met our demands. We're not going anywhere. We're, We're not, not going, going anywhere. anywhere. Here you are. Here you are. Here you are. Channel 4 News. Coverage you can count on starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Abby Martin and this is a news update. Metro Police are looking for a third man involved in shooting an off-duty Chattanooga police officer. Kenneth Blue was shot outside Bailey's Sports Bar in Antioch yesterday morning. Police say Blue and his friends had just left Bailey's when they saw two groups of men fighting. Detectives say Blue got out of the car and tried to break up the fight. Officers say Blue never showed his gun. He was not involved in the fight or anything. Uh, he actually come out uh, and, and identified himself as an officer and told him, hey, you know, you need to go on your way. And uh, they refused, and, and one of the individuals pulled out a weapon and shot him. Blue was shot in the mouth. He's expected to be okay. Police arrested two suspects at the scene for questioning. A Paducah woman who survived a boat crash that killed two others on Lake Barkley last month is out of a coma and on the road to recovery. Heather Reams is working to get her motor skills back after she was hit in the head. Reams is also trying to overcome apatia, a disorder that results from damage to portions of the brain responsible for language. 38-year-old Jonah Snow and 28-year-old Adam Smith were killed when the boat they were riding in smashed into a wall. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife must receive further test results before releasing any more information about the crash. Hospital giant HCA is being sold. Nashville-based company HCA, which was started by the Frist family, has agreed to be purchased by an investors group for about $21.3 billion. The new company will also assume nearly $12 billion in HCA debt. This deal is now one of the largest takeovers in history. The new Miss Universe collapsed just moments after receiving her crown. Telemundo shot this video after Sunday night's telecast of the big beauty pageant. You can see Zuleika Rivera Mendoza in the background wearing her crown. Rivera was surrounded by handlers when she fainted. The woman was wearing a dress made completely of metal chains and had been standing under hot stage lights for some time when she went limp. A reporter picked the woman up and rushed her off the stage where she received treatment. Mendoza represented Puerto Rico in last night's competition. I'm Abby Martin. Join us for the latest news, weather, sports, tonight at 5.